Hi, I'm Shotgun Tori, an indie singer-songwriter. I believe that stories are to be shared and not left to wither quietly, with an imperative to inspire creators to keep making art against all arts. We created the Shotgun Story Podcast. It has conversations with independent artists about music, meaning, and the point of it all. What drives them? How do they keep afloat? What are the difficulties they face? And how do they tackle these challenges? Keep an eye open for bonus interviews, industry experts who seek to answer these questions. It's an inspiring resource for anyone who loves music and has ever thought about making. For more information or to find the show notes, you can head over to shotguntory.com. Bart Jensen is a guitar player, a producer, an entrepreneur based in the beautiful Harlem in the Netherlands. I met him forever ago. This man is a genius. I'm chatting to him here today. Hi, Bart. Hi. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Why music? What drew you here? What sparked your love of it? Uh, it started for me as a kid. I guess I was six, seven years old. I had guitar lessons, classical guitar lessons. And I think uh, it started with uh, listening to records of Eric Clapton. That's what inspired me to start to pick up the guitar. And I never let it go since then, you know, I, I, I keep, kept playing and uh, developing. So I think it was uh, Eric Clapton and Mark Knopfler of the Dire Straits. My parents listened to it uh, every day. So I mean, what made you decide to do it professionally? The key turning point was, I think, when I was about 15 years old. I, st I started to play g uh, classical guitar as I grew older. I, um, I was listening to Van Halen and Metallica, Bon Jovi and stuff. So I didn't actually like playing classical. And my guitar teacher told me like, OK, but you can also play electric guitar. And I, that was mind blowing for me. Like, OK, is that possible? You know, <laughs> I thought, you know, I thought I could only play a classical guitar. So he borrowed his uh, an old electric guitar to me. I could use it for two months and I was sold, you know, I was like, I kept practicing. And so as I, when I was 18 years old, I went to Rotterdam a music school and I studied there for four, five years, four or five years. So that was, you know, that was the turning point of my career, actually picking up the electric guitar and then, you know, playing with older guys, I guess that, that motivated me. I, you know, I was 15 years old and I played in a band with guys like what, 25 years old and so I had you know the level was pretty high for me mm. and I had to keep up with th these guys and you know I never let it go and if you were to look at your career as a timeline what three to five highlights it can be three it can be five it can be ten if you like would give context to a listener who's not familiar with you and your music career the first highlight was entering the code arts conservatory in Rotterdam I had to do an audition, which was pretty heavy. And the first time I was rejected. So I practiced one more year really hard. <laughs> and it was like 80 guitar players at that year and only four were allowed. The next year I could start to study that. Yeah, that was a highlight because, you know, that's, that's the starting point of your career because your, your teachers are the best session players uh, of the Netherlands, you know, so that keeps your uh, career going, you know. And during my study in the third year, they were looking for a, a, a guitar player for the former uh, idol winner of the Netherlands. It's called Boris. It's, it's the, one of the best singers of the Netherlands. It's crazy. My teacher said like, hey, man, maybe you should, should go there, you know? So he uh, recommended me to, to the band leader and they hired me. And so during my study, I was already starting to do sessions, you know, that did radio shows for the first time and the TV and did festivals. So that was a big highlight as well. Get involved in that whole session world, you know, and then you get to know other bands and you get, you know, from there on, yeah. it's like a snowball effect. So that was my first job during my study. It was pretty uh, cool. Wonderful. Yeah. From that point, you know, it, it kept evolving. So it, you do bigger venues and stuff. So stadiums sometimes uh, that that was pretty cool you know as yeah. a kid you dream about that right <laughs> so that's pretty cool that yeah that, yeah. <laughs> yeah and i did some radio promotion with uh a weirdest gig was with the backstreet boys i guess i did wow. a radio promotion in the netherlands the record company needed a guitar player and they asked me so that was pretty surreal you know go all from 
on tour with the Baxter Boys. It was, it was pretty cool. And, and a turning point in my career was starting to produce. You know, I, I, I did a lot of pop sessions as a guitar player, so I played a lot of pop music. You know, I always loved the sound of pop songs, you know, the Swedish songs, actually, you know, the, 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 the Max Martin sound, the whole, the whole pop sound of the 90s. When I started producing, I had my uh, experience as a guitar player, you know, I took it with me and I tried to evolve that, uh, develop that pop sound. And that was a turning point. I started producing, I think, 10 years ago. I kept developing that and, and now it's more, I'm more a producer than a guitar player, I guess. Mm -hmm. So that's a highlight of my career. I don't know if it's a highlight, but... It's pivotal. Yeah, yeah. Those are great highlights. I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a talented guy. I think that makes a difference. I always think of myself, I'm not that uh, talented, you know, I'm, I'm more a hard worker. I, I work really hard, you know. Sometimes I see kids play like, oh my God, I, I wish I could do that at that age, you know. So I always had a, I think my mindset helped me through it, I guess. No, I mean, that's super important. It's so easy to just coast and hope you're going to succeed. But without the hard work, well, there's no longevity in a career. You have to keep working and, and develop yourself. And it's a really fast business, you know. Mm. Younger kids are waiting for you <laughs> to, <laughs> to quit. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I like, I love to work with young producers and musicians. Yeah. Embrace it. Uh, sorry, yeah. Oh, wonderful. I want to talk a bit about that now, now. Tell me your ultimate why, what drives you to create, what inspires you to keep working as hard as you work? I love to develop myself, you know, to get better. And, and I want, when I do something, I want to be really good. You know, that, that inspires me. You know, every time I pick up the guitar, I practice something, it, it, makes me better so that that motivates me a lot and the creative process of writing in the studio and stuff is i love the whole idea that you know you wake up in the morning and there's nothing and you have a session with other writers and stuff and and, and one day and and at the end of the day there's something there's a song you know that and it could be you know it could be a hit that whole idea that inspires me like, okay, what are we going to do today? So every day is, there's never a dull moment. And that inspires me a lot, you know. Oh, it's so exciting when you talk about it like that. Could you talk about your songwriting process for a moment? I'm not a, a lyric writer. So I always work with people who write lyrics. I produce and write melody. I, I'm really into melody. When I started uh, writing, I always started at the guitar and, and still it does because that's my, you know, that's, that's what I breathe. You know, I, I, I know what it's, it's like, I don't have to think about it, but lately it can be everything. You know, it, it can start like, sometimes I hear a vocal hook. Sometimes I hear a beat, you know, I start with a beat and then, so it's, it's always different. It always depends on the artist you're working with, I guess. Yeah, lately, last year, I, I, I don't know if you know Splice. It's a platform with millions of samples. That's basically it. So, so you, you pay like $8 a month and then you can grab everything. Vocals, the drums, loops, percussion loops. And, and that inspires me as well. Like, you know, sometimes I, I hear a sound uh, at that website, you know, and grab it from Splice and work around that. And so it can come from everywhere, mm. actually. And obviously you collaborate then with a lot of musicians, as you say, with lyricists, mm. singers. How does that work? So let's say, how do you connect with someone who you want to work with? And then once that happens, what is the process? We're working with maximum four people in a, in a session, I guess, you know, not more. And it depends, it really depends on the artist. Sometimes, most of the time, the artist is with, with us in the studio. And I work with, with small teams. So I got a few writers I work with a lot. And sometimes you work with new people and yeah, as we get in, uh, in the studio, we first grab a coffee around the corner and just chat for an hour or something, you know, just, just about life and whatever, get to know each other, get to know the artist, you know, what, what inspires him or her, uh, where do you want to write about? And then we just start most of the time during the conversation with the coffee, I start picking up the guitar and just play something randomly like try to get in the vibe and then it starts from there there on you know mumbling vocals and stuff and then from there we, we we work so it's it's in a creative process we, we we talk a lot i guess you know and sometimes i have sessions i we, we talk like five hours just about nothing and then one hour bum you, you you do the whole song and sometimes it's really hard 
you work for for straight six hours i think six hours is the max in a session yeah yeah it, it, it depends but but yeah most of the time it's just feeling the vibe and 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 most important is the best idea wins i guess you know mm -hmm. there's no place room for egos i think that's the most important thing when someone for example if we write a song and you have an idea and in my mind i'm like mm, i'm not sure about it i would never say that like okay let's try it you know yeah. or maybe there's something in it that could evolve the song to a whole different direction so yeah always let people spread their ideas that's that's really important that can kill a session if i i had it before like i was in a session and someone tried some uh, one tried something and on forehand they, they were saying like oh that's not gonna work then you know yeah. then you can all go home <laughs> at that point <laughs> because it's it's ruined the whole session that's oh yeah. i mean do you ever finish one of those six hour sessions without having a complete song yeah it, it, it happens yeah but most most of the time it's like we don't have the lyrics ready for for a second verse of a, or a bridge or something so and and i always have to listen back the day after or something you know um totally. when i'm when i'm working alone finishing the songs in a day i go through three sessions a day you know like switching from song to song because it keeps you fresh sometimes you're so so much in the zone that happens if you you know sometimes you can't finish a song because you you know you can't figure uh, finish the puzzle i guess you know yeah, so it needs time yeah but finishing is really a important finishing is <laughs> you have to finish the songs yeah that's that's a dangerous part yeah what confuses me i guess as a creator is how do you know if it's any good gut feeling i guess mm -hmm. my best hit meter <laughs> is play it for your for your family who, who are not non-musicians you know yeah those are the best critics at least i do it i want my my neighbor to like the songs and i want my you know friends like uh, play those, those songs and not you know the worst critics are the uh, musicians i guess because they are always picking on a on a drum sound or it, it doesn't matter it's, it's it's the song the song has to be good and when i when i play it for my girlfriend she always picks out the the, the weak spots you know yeah <laughs> like um mm, this is weird this sounds weird uh, I, I don't get it oh it's you know that's the best way to check out if it's and it's gut feeling, I guess. Sometimes you know, right? You know, yeah. you you're creating. You're in a room with with people and like, okay, this is something. But I'm the worst A and R, I guess. You know, because sometimes I think like, oh man, this is this is a smash, and then at the record company, they they are like, um, I don't, <laughs> you don't feel it. I'm like, but what? You know. And and the weirdest th thing happened. We created a song once, and uh, actually, uh, I wasn't a band. And we we, had, we did an album for trail songs and we wanted to skip one song like, OK, this, this is not going to going to work. And then the record company said, like, OK, this is the single. And it, it came pretty big in, in Dutch radio. So it's like, you know, wow. <laughs> sometimes you're totally wrong. So when you're working with a team, do you generally work with the artist who is going to be performing that song? Or do you sometimes work with a team of songwriters and then have an artist that it'll be for? I think 80% of the time we're working with artists who perform, eventually perform the song. Mm. And sometimes you do a pitch, but I'm not doing that quite often. It's like, you know, I want the artist to be involved with it. Some artists are really hands on and some are just in the room. And uh, that's fine too, you know. Yeah. And our policy is like, whenever you're in the room, you write together, you know, we do always do equal splits because, you know, absolutely that one person can say something, a word that can change the whole direction. So. Yeah, I think it's really important to have the artist in the room. Absolutely. And also to have that agreement up front about splits. With the people I work with often, it's 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 not a discussion, but you, you have, you know, the split bullshit. You have it several times a year. And I luckily I have a publisher now who I'm sending an email like, fix this, please. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is what we agreed on. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get involved with it. There's always a tricky thing. I'm not a supporter of discussing splits before a session or something, you know, mm -hmm. but when you do a writing camp for a publisher, there are always split sheets at the end. So you write it down and it's, you know, there's never the discussion. So yeah, it's always a tricky part, the business side and the creative part. Wow. That's interesting. 
A writing camp. What is that? A writing camp. Um, uh, you have that a lot lately in the Netherlands. Basically, it's like, okay, this artist needs a new album. We are having a writing camp with, like, let's say, five studios in one building. I, I did a camp lately. I think there were 20 songwriters uh, involved. And it's organized by publishers. So mm. the publisher said, like, okay, we're going to make some small groups. Like, you, you're going to write with him. You're going to write with her. And, you know? Yeah. And then you do one session a day or sometimes two you know you start in the morning with a group you have lunch and you do another one and then have dinner and, and next day you, you you're getting back so after that week there are like uh, i don't know uh, 40 songs or something for that artist wow. so that's uh like a music factory kind of idea i did it once for for an artist that i'm involved with and it's pretty cool because you know i'm not a big fan of writing camps because you it's sometimes you can get in pretty deep in it, you know. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, oh shit, we have to change group. Oh, let's write uh, first two really fast because we have one hour left. Yeah, I don't really like that concept, but for networking, it's pretty good, you know. Last uh, writing camp, I saw uh, writers I haven't seen in five years. So that's you know, th that's good about it. Wow, I mean, it sounds amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But I want to ask more about the songwriting for a second. Do you have tips for songwriters who are um, keen on on writing not just for themselves? A collaboration is really important. You can learn from other people, you know. And 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 sometimes I'm not good at lyrics. I, I try, but I'm not. You know, I'm. I know what I'm good at. Don't be afraid to, to collaborate because if you you want to go for the best result, and if you're not a good producer, just find a good producer and you write the lyrics, or you know, vice versa. So a co collaboration is, a, I think, key in this pro in that process. Yeah, and it starts with listen to songs. You know, what do you want? If you want to go into pop, just go to Spotify and listen to what what's happening in that song. What's there are some rules. You know, like if you have a single in the Netherlands, at least it's like the song is two and a half minutes max, max three minutes. You know. You you have to know these these things if you write for for an artist who is in, in the charge. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to write a song five minute song. You know, yeah, all these key elements you have to know what's important. So I said earlier, finish the songs. You know, finish everything you do. That's a learning process as well. Not just start something and it's I don't know if it's good enough. No, try to find a way to get it better and finish it and and go on to the next one. So it's like write 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 you know you have to write a lot and you have to make shitty songs <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was reading an interview with pete seeger about his songwriting the other day and mm -hmm. he was talking about maybe write you know 100 songs and there's probably one in 10 that by the end of the year you're still playing yeah i think at sheeran said it as well like you have to write a uh, hundred songs and 99 are shitty and <laughs> one is a hit you know yeah i think that's true and so once you've finished writing the song how do you get it to the right ears onto the right discs that's probably network and it started for me as a as a guitar player you you play with with several artists so you get to know their managers you get to know record label people so as you start with songwriting i think it's you have to connect with with record label people just send them the, your demos and, and you know it's build your network i think that's that's really important and be honest to yourself like if you have a folky song don't pitch it to a hip-hop label you know <laughs> you know you have to understand that like what would be the perfect fit and talk with publishers i guess you know if you really want to write for artists i think a publisher would be a good option for you but if you want to be stay independent, keep your publishing. Yeah, so so it, it depends. But but most of the, you know, get out there and and try to reach out for for people in the business because it's the business is as important as the as the product. Yeah, you know, if you have a shitty song, nobody wants to listen. But <laughs> you know, uh, the product has to be good. But the business side is really important. Get to know people. Right? That's yeah, yeah. key. <laughs> Great advice. 
I think streaming is really important. So get your music out there and syncs. Uh, so sync will uh, get your mu music in uh, in uh, commercials and stuff. So, but it's a slow business. It's yeah. not like you know when, when you do a gig, it's like okay, uh, you get paid and that's it. So if you make an album now of an EP or something, you see the revenues within a few years. So that's that's challenging. Yeah. But it's a way, you know, it, it is possible. You have to start, I guess, you know, just do it. And, and the content is king. So bring out the song. Wonderful. Is that a good advice? I don't know. Yes, I know. But what's interesting but... about it is it's such an, a different perspective because a lot of people have been, and me included, have been feeling like streaming has been the death of album sales. But to hear you speak about it like this is a whole new light on it. It's wonderful. Yeah, you have to face it. Like album sales, you can hold on to that. But the reality is that's that's not gonna you know mm. no one's buying cds anymore no. why would you because you, you know you can stream and get it you know if you pay like uh what is it ten dollars a month eight dollars a month you have a whole you have every song within your hands so you're not gonna win <laughs> you're not gonna survive if you uh, so embrace it i guess but you need a lot of streams to <laughs> make money <laughs> and make a good deal with a record label that's that's another thing mentioning that with get, making a good deal with a record label, isn't some of the story that a lot of the artists who sign deals before this whole streaming thing don't get money for their streams? Or is that not true? Uh, it depends on the deal. Yeah. You know, that there are several ways to build your career. You know, if you, if you have a, like a, an artist deal, like 360 deal, that, so they invest in you, so they pay your uh, productions, they pay your video, they pay your mar for your marketing. It could be helpful for the first two albums to get into the industry and, and um, get people to, uh, to know uh, you. Mm -hmm. But there's another way. If you keep it all to yourself, you pay for your own production and own videos and stuff and do your own marketing. You can make a distribution deal, you know, and you get more of the revenues. So yeah, it, it depends on, on where, where you're at your career, I guess. I think that's important. And the artists that you've seen taking a knock from live shows, how have you seen them get creative about making an actual living right now? There are some who got other jobs, you know, mm -hmm. to, to survive. They have a family at home. And, and so that's pretty happy to see, you know, people are getting into the studio and create, 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 you know, that, that's that's what people do now. And also make commercial deals uh, with, with brands and stuff. Yeah. But then you have to be a uh, well-known artist. And some are doing streaming concerts, you know, and some are good at it. They, they ask like four euros per ticket, mm. but you know, it's, it's still, it's not, not the same, uh, experience as, as a live concert. So I don't really believe in that concept. Content is king. That is the takeaway. Yeah. Is there a song that you wish that you had written? Uh, yeah, many. <laughs> Lately, I, I thought of someone yesterday. I was talking about the last Justin Bieber song. Yeah. Anyone? It's uh -huh. called Anyone. I was like, I literally said like, oh man, I wish I wrote that song. That's that's a smash for me. But it's not, you know, every Alba song is great. That every, you know, Queen. I think for me as a as a producer, I I, I really I really love the the Max Martin stuff. It's the, the Swedish producer, one of the biggest pop producers in the world. You know, he did everything for uh, the, the Britney Spears songs to, to, to Taylor Swift. I, I really love the simplicity of it. Like, it's so difficult to write something so simple. That, that is like, for me, it's the same, uh, same level as the Beatles, this guy. It's like, wow, that is saying something. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think some people will, will kill me now, but <laughs> but I, I really mean that. It's like to write the simplest thing is is, is really uh, difficult, and he, he is the master of it. And do you have a wish list collaboration worldwide? I yeah. would say like Taylor Swift would be amazing. Yes, I think she's she's a really really good songwriter. I really like Charlie Put. He's really talented as well. Yeah, and Adele would be great. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you have to be realistic. I think you should, if you want to work with these people, you have to be realistic and move to the States or move to London or something, you know? Yeah. I'm really uh, realistic about that and then work from there. Mm -hmm. 
What advice, given everything we've spoken about, what advice would you give to indie creators to keep them keeping on? I would say, first of all, believe in what you do. And, and you know, it's, it's a cheap answer, but it starts with that. You know, you have to believe yourself, you know, and, 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 and want to get hurt and work hard, work your ass off. I think that's really important. It's musically, but it's also business wise. Okay. If, if you want to, you can't say like, okay, I'm, I'm in the studio, I'm, I'm writing so, uh, uh, 300 songs a year and not knowing the business, that's not going to work. So, and I'm complaining about it's hard because mm. no, you have to know, you have to know how the business works. Mm. I think that's really important and work hard, you know, and be selfish, I guess, in that point of view, not like in, but you have to be like, okay, I want to get hurt. You have to shout it out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. get to know people and because it's hard, you know, you have to work hard because, because the best of the world are like 24 seven in the studio, seven days a week Yeah, and hang in there, hang in there, you know, <laughs> it's just. I, I really believe if you work hard and, and get the content out, you eventually it's gonna gonna land somewhere. Definitely, be patient. That's a, that's a good advice, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> work hard and be patient. And hang in there. I love it. Hang in there. Yeah. yeah. And now, can anyone find you on social media if they want to see what you're doing, what you're up to? Yeah, I think Instagram would do more. Yeah, it's Bart. R T S Bart. Bart, thank you. Thank you for having me. Gosh, there's so really, really so much valuable information here. Yeah, I'm excited and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. It was a pleasure. <laughs> you too. <laughs> if you are an independent artist whose passion for what you do can inspire or fuel others, get in touch. I'd love to chat. You can find me on shotguntory.com. You've been listening to another production from Solid Gold Podcasts. 